Hi everyone, I'm your host Malik Mercier and this is GBH's Why It Matters. Today, we're going to take a look at how fashion can reveal and reflect the politics of an era. One fashion trend that has made a statement in recent years has been the wearing of the color white by women in U.S. politics from then Vice President-elect Harris wearing a white pantsuit in November 2020 to women in the U.S. Congress sitting together to express their individual and collective influence at a State of the Union speech. To help us gain insight into how people have used fashion as means of engaging with politics throughout history is Dr. Victoria Pass. I'm so excited you're here. I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me. When it comes to U.S. politicians wearing white, can you help us understand when and how this trend sort of began and what it represents? It really goes back to the suffrage movement, women's suffrage movement. And part of what this generation of suffrage activists was doing was trying to kind of create a new image for the movement as they were pressing for the right to vote. And they chose the color white and a white dress and more often a big group of women in white dresses showed up really beautifully in a kind of grainy newspaper photograph. So women in more recent years have chosen in politics to wear white to sort of call back to the suffrage movement and to pay homage to these forebearers who paved the way for their political achievements. So it's become this very symbolic color Wearing white wasn't the first time suffrage activists had used fashion to support their cause. In the mid-1800s, they wore bloomers, but that proved controversial. Could you tell us more about this? This was essentially like an early version of trousers that American women were wearing. There were a number of suffrage activists who very publicly wore them. Amelia Bloomer did. Once you saw a woman in bloomers, you immediately knew she was a suffrage activist. People really did think about pants as this symbol of male power, and for women to be wearing them was quite shocking. And what happens is, because this is a period before these kind of instant newspaper photographs, you get a lot of illustrations and a lot of satirical cartoons, these very unflattering images associated with the bloomers. So shortly after they started wearing them, it's somewhere between like five and eight years in the 1850s that you have women wearing them, they're pretty much discarded. Um, and Amelia Bloomer writes really clearly about this. She says, it got in the way of our message. That was all anybody was talking about. So they recognized that it was the white dress was a much more feminine way of approaching having a dress that signified your politics. And so it was more effective than the bloopers costume was. Black feminists had a lot less room for this kind of radical experimentation with dress because they're really trying to combat these really racist stereotypes about black women. And so presenting themselves in a respectable, feminine manner becomes really important. Um, Sojourner Truth is a really interesting figure in this regard as a abolitionist and a suffrage activist. She's very careful about how she presents herself in a dress. She said that she was forced to wear pants or bloomers when she was enslaved. And so for her, they weren't liberation. They didn't signify freedom the way that they did to white feminists. So it had a very different meaning for her. But we don't see women wearing pants as a fashion trend again for decades. So when does that change? And how does that change reflect on the politics of an era? It's really in World War II where they're starting to wear pants for their jobs. But as late as 1993, no woman had ever worn pants to um, the Senate floor. <laughs> um, and so it's Carol Mosley Braun, who's the first African-American woman elected to Senate, not quite knowing the rules, she wore them in DC as a new senator. So Vicky, fashion continued to evolve as a way to represent political movements, but it also served as a way for people to identify and to unite together who those people who may have shared the same points of view. So how do we see this uh, during the politically active decade of the 1960s? The civil rights movement who use the Sunday best as the clothes that they wear to protest in. So for instance, if you think about Martin Luther King, you almost always see him in a suit. 
he's you know perfectly dressed in a suit looking very polished in line really with um, kind of Sojourner Truth thinking that they needed to really present this respectable middle class image to combat all of these racist stereotypes that were present that they were fighting against. But a younger generation of protesters, they were often working with people who were working class. And so they started to adopt blue jeans, denim, as really a kind of uniform. Another interesting thing in the 60s is that political campaigns started kind of funny trend around 1968 for paper dresses for Richard Nixon, Nelson Rockefeller, and Robert Kennedy all had these paper dresses made, I think, to appeal to young people. All of these campaigns were kind of using fashion as a way of engaging that audience. These are striking visual examples. Most people will remember, as we spoke about, that iconic image of Vice President Harris's historic victory speech. Her decision to wear a white pantsuit wasn't trivial, but was actually loaded with meaning, and it helped to reinforce uh, her message of unity and empowerment. Do you have any final thoughts about how we can use history to inform our understanding of fashion and politics today? Yeah, I think I think what you said is really important that, you know, fashion isn't trivial. It's kind of the first visual impression that we make on each other. If you pay attention to it, you can really see the different ways that it's been used throughout history to signal politics. But I think also, you know, as the case with pants, you can see how it kind of maps a change over time. It wasn't just this one-off thing. It, those intentional choices years and years ago still play out today. So thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It was wonderful to talk fashion with you.